good evening everyone uh, first of all welcome you all to this uh, wonderful session for joining this session so today we are gathered here uh, to congratulate first of all to prabhu kalya uh, our senior uh, from batch 2018 who has secured a uh, media.net placement as a software developer engineer so he would be discussing some of his highlights and what he faced in those for the three rounds that he uh, like he was going through those three recruitment rounds so what he faced and then uh, there will be a short q and a sessions where you can ask your questions and doubts regarding the uh, recruitment process so now i would hand over this mic to pravel kalya for more details now yeah. so pravel yeah can you take one yeah yeah hello uh, am i audible yeah you are audible uh, good evening everyone so first of all thanks for the congratulatory messages and uh, as uh, as the flash went by on the whatsapp groups i was bombarded by like 10000 messages from everyone uh, about what was the process and also uh, we planned a meeting so that i can just it will be very efficient for me instead of replying to everyone and uh, so this is just a recap of what all happened and i will as joshi shared that we will have a qa session later so uh, i'll i'll try to share my screen first so can you uh, joshi can you uh, grant me screen sharing options okay right so uh, it is zoom has a whiteboard so i'm going to just try here yeah it does so uh, so as of uh, so i'll tell you what the whole process was so uh, first of all there was this online coding round and then after those rounds there were four uh, there were three there were three three rounds uh, three interviews so uh, and in all these three interviews at media.net i wasn't actually asked like uh, all three of them were basically technical rounds only like there was no specific round which was for hr so they were just judging on the hr on the basis of how i performed in the technical rounds itself so uh, and uh, now this was the total round so first of all the coding round and coding round had three questions and then there was three interviews so um, i'll i'll share my whole screen and then i'll i have prepared a document and that i'll share with uh, you guys too so uh, joshi my whole screen is being shared right yeah 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 your whole screen is visible okay so this is the doc that i prepared so first of all let's uh, move on to the coding round so first of all Uh, if you don't know what media net so media net as comes under the director recruitment process and it is a uh, it is a it is a global leader in advertisement technology and it comes after it comes after google adsense so you must have known google adsense is what is responsible for for youtube ads and everything so collecting data and um, analyzing the data for user specific ads so google adsense is the global leader and after that in the second position is uh, is media.net so uh, it's also a global leader in advertisement tech and it also it it's not a service based company as such but it also makes us products from ground up so all the networks or everything that they develop are uh, are made from ground up so if they can be recruited uh, they can be termed as a product based company so uh, that's uh, that's the whole reason why uh, I'm, uh, i have got such a huge package for the sde ro so as of uh, so these are uh, this is the document that i have prepared so uh, coding round let's uh, move forward to it so there were three questions and there was a tree question there was a string question with uh, dynamic programming and the graph question so for people who do not know what dynamic programming is or uh, string or graph is just a method of solving problems method of solving recursive problems and i'm sure that uh, many technical sessions would be conducted on uh, dp that is dynamic programming and it will help you to solve these questions so out of these three questions right 
so if we have time later and if you guys want to we will discuss these questions in depth too but i have just written these questions so in the interview uh, in the code online coding round it was held on the platform interviewbit.com so if you just go on interviewbit and uh interviewbit.com yeah so this was the site uh, on which the coding rounds were being held and as per my talk with many of uh, previous medianet hires so they have been practicing on this side too so uh, there are many uh, on this side like their interview guides like director right exactly so uh, director also recruits off campus through through interview bit so if you uh, so these are the coding questions that were asked from director and etc so uh, you can go on to the site and it's a really good site so uh, i'll just recommend everyone to check out just note them in uh, in a notepad or something this site is uh, is really good and uh, it has it, it is uh, like almost as far on par as beat code if not better so that's why i i really recommend this site on this site only our uh, coding most of the coding hires are taken on this platform so i recommend you to get familiar with this platform and uh, yeah that's it so let's move on and so there were these three questions so we will, uh, i'll discuss so out of these three questions like uh, i'll uh, i just open the chat box so that i can read it is there somewhere yeah okay joshi just typed it for everyone okay so uh, these were the three questions uh, once i go over the interview process like these three are uh, really um, th these three will take time to discuss so that's why i'm i'm trying not to discuss them right now but uh, in the in the 90 minutes that were given right so there were three questions so 90 minutes so it's uh, 30 minutes per question so it was like a really low so uh, you need really uh, good speed and implementation skills because uh, for example if you're implementing something and you uh, and you fail to implement it and it will take you 15 minutes to debug it itself so that's why uh, to pass the coding around you you needed really good cp skills so you you needed really good computer programming skills computer programming as it not in the long challenges code chef long challenges as in the short bursts of code chef uh, code chef cookoffs and code forces rounds that happen uh, that happen almost every week multiple times a week too so three questions 90 minutes so that was the thing and these three questions aren't easy so as you can see uh, this was a tree question and this was a string question with deep and this was a graph question it wasn't like some specific algorithm was being applied you have to develop your logic on your own and try to and try to solve it so that's why you needed some really good cp practice in order to solve the coding round first so in order to clear the coding round only so in the interview so i have solved the first two questions in the coding round i solved the first two questions but i was stuck on the third question i was like i wasn't stuck on the third question i i got how I, how i could approach the third question but my time ran out so and also in the uh, in this question right in the de question uh, i didn't clear all the test cases so uh, for some test cases was giving me tle so i fully solved this question i got tle on some cases for the tree question and i wasn't able to complete the graph question so in 90 minutes so i was thinking like uh, I, i didn't do uh, really well in the coding round and uh, i was thinking like uh, okay so that's end for me but uh, fortunately this was enough for me to clear the coding round and i guess four people from our batch only could clear the coding round out of like 70 people who applied approximately 70 people who applied so moving on coding around and um, around one interview happened like a week after the coding round so if you have uh, if you want me to discuss these questions we can do so but later after the rounds so i'll i just ask a qa later this is an overview so in the round one interview i was uh, interviewed by a guy called aditya gupta he was sde2 at uh, Media net, so a role higher than the SD one that I am joining, right? So uh, there was this guy Aditya Gupta. He interviewed me and SD too. So he asked me first about my projects and how I did it. So uh, this guy was also really into chess. So he he connected with me because I made a chess engine as my project. So 
and afterwards he asked me what all subjects uh, have i learnt in college so i told him that i've i've learnt uh, data structures algorithms cryptography uh, operating systems computer networks so he asked me some questions about cryptography like what is encryption what are block ciphers and name some industry standard encryption algorithms like aes des and all that stuff so as i've learnt cryptography uh, i was i was confident in that so that's why i was i was actually uh, i was actually uh, playing some mind games like uh, i was trying for the interview to ask me questions on the topic that i'm strong at if uh, if i if i concentrated that i knew computer networks much more right so he would have asked me questions about computer networks but uh, in my conversation i was trying to put in that i i know a lot about cryptography so um, as my course so Uh, so that's why he asked me questions about cryptography and um and i was able to answer them all so after cryptography he was uh, as interviewers are so they have to move into the coding realm so they th- th- thought something common between cryptography and uh, algorithm so he started asking me questions about hashing so what is hashing what are dictionaries what are maps some name some hash algorithms right so some some hash algorithms like uh, in cryptography the sh is a secure hash algorithm and how hashing works and how hashing is used in databases so uh, in dbms is so how hashing is used so etc if you de- de- design a matrix how you can use hashing to have better queries to find uh, the stuff that you like that is in that matrix faster and stuff like that so uh, this all took me like uh, this look this all these all questions took like 10 minutes of the interview and it was for one hour so in the rest 45 minutes i was given this coding question so uh, this time i'll uh, what i want you guys just to have this interview with me so i want you guys to try to come up with approaches or let uh, come up with approaches and uh, let's have some some interactive Uh, instead of me solving it on my own so anyone like even joshi so you can also try to solve this question so uh, this was the question so you are given four strings permutable strings so let's say uh, you have a a b c and then uh, b b c d a and c c d e f a and uh, a a and rest all a so let's assume right so you have four permutable strings so you can permute these strings so and you have to find the minimum number of nodes required if we make try for this thing so what are try so first of all if you if you had to attempt this coding question you needed to know what a try is so if you just go on and search on what a try is so you can see it's like this structure it's it's something to uh, filter out uh, it's something for searching efficient searching of strings so uh if my string is p i'll go on this node if the next character is e i'll go on this node if the next character is a i'll go into this node and i got t so if i was implementing a parser or a compiler uh, that searches for tokens right so i make a tr- try like structure so uh, whenever it sees t it goes on to this node whenever it sees e after the t it goes on to this node and whenever it sees a out of e it goes on to this node so tries are used almost everywhere when it comes to string matching algorithms so you needed to know what a try is so as of now i've just uh, i've just told you what a try is so you can permute these strings and you need to make a try out of them but uh, we need to find out the minimum number of nodes that were required so uh, let's uh, so i'll just read the chat if anyone has any uh, approaches or like how how would you approach this question you can unmute to if you want to just have an interactive session with me or explain what is going on in your mind because like in interviews you are not expected like in such difficult interviews you are not expected to solve the full question by yourself uh, you are being given hints small hints by the interview inter- interviewer and then you go on and solve the question yourself like uh, with with the help of those hints obviously is anyone there just drop a hi in chat if you are there nice 
what does permutable strings mean here like we can permute them and make a try out of it like you can uh, you can shift the letter so like a a b c could be written as a uh, c a b a you can permute the characters in the string you can make a permutation out of those sort first yeah we saw so sort characters in each string that make tries yes so uh, right uh, I, I, so i'll just talk about sorting first so that's what i first thought when i was in an interview right so when i told aditya gupta that uh, i was uh, uh, that one way i don't know if that's the most optimal way to do it but you can sort all those characters so that uh, you can have all the uh, so if if i sort this to and it will be uh, a a uh, a c a b b and c d right and this one would be uh, a c c and d e f right and this one is just all a so uh, five times a right so uh, what uh, and then i'll try to make a try out of these things but the problem is uh, here right let's say if there were like uh, three b's here okay let's assume there were three b's here and three b's in every string right so first of all uh, what i told to the interviewer is to make how do i approach to find the minimum number of nodes i need if i want minimum number of nodes i need the most common things at the top at higher at a higher tree level right because if i do it at lower tree level they will lead to more branches if i have some common stuff at the top right so uh, a lot of my subtrees will be pruned subtrees sorry I'm, like i'm just kind of confusing subtrees will be pruned if i have the common elements at a higher level so that's my intuition and in sorting you just uh, it's a heuristic yes you can use it but uh, here i proved like it's not the most optimal approach so uh, i'll just continue and read it. i'll read the chat again but i'll close it uh, also by the way if you're wondering all the interviews were held on uh, uh, on google meet and uh, all the coding was done on raspad like uh, this thing so raspad.io is a collaborative code editor so uh, just like uh, you connect to a server someone also else connects to you and if you write something here and the other person can also see so and also write uh, no so write so raspad so if you want to get familiar with it and so be it right and uh, okay so after the sorting uh, sorting from vesak and sisatri and aryan type a muting string and then get the longest common prefix so how what is the rule of yeah longest common prefix is something uh, like uh, even json suggest, suggested a uh, really nice name json can we use next permutation yeah you can use it but uh, is it efficient uh, uh, basit says a try is that all four these four strings can be made at the end of the tree exactly what's the use of the try then you have to make a try such that uh, all these four strings can be represented at, uh, as the leaf nodes so uh, use hashing to get the frequency of most common elements yes so that's what my first idea was so i wanted to make a frequency map to get uh, to get uh, the number of characters so if i make a frequency map of uh, this it will be a2 b1 and c1 right and for this one it would be a1 and b2 and c1 and d1 right and this one it would be uh, a1 and uh, c2 and d1 and e1 and f1 right and this would be a5 right so this is the frequency map and from this frequency map as aryan suggested we can calculate the longest common prefix so what is the prefix the num the substring that is getting repeated exactly so if you iterate like a so you can take the minimum of uh, 2115 that is one right so a1 and then you can take the minimum of b so b is 1 2 0 and 0 so b is 0 and similarly you can go from a to z and find out the common prefix and i uh, i guess the common prefix is just a so in this case it's just a but i just messed up the formatting all right right so if you have uh, so that this is for sure once you have the longest common prefix right you need to keep it at the top of the tree so this is just one node right 
the number of nodes uh, the longest common prefix will be your branches right so these number of nodes you actually need right in the tree the length of the longest common prefix so yeah so you used hashing to generate this frequency map and you calculate the longest common prefix what next this is just a part of a solution right you just made the top layer or top layer or not exactly top layer but you just uh, made one branch what about the rest of the branches next common so what you also you're trying to uh, reduce the number of like uh, i've already taken one a so you'll reduce it from the frequency map and then you calculate the next common right yeah but that also doesn't work in a case because let's say if i had uh, uh, let's say this a was common only i had three b's here and uh, and then three b's here too and then uh, three c's and then three c's and one d and one d right which one will you take which uh, which of these two will you take you have a as the common substring right but then uh, are you going to branch it out with b or will branch it out with c and d right so uh, let's let's just skip forward so what happened i was also searching from some optimization but i was like uh, why do i need to make my life complex for me right i have already figured out like the longest common prefix right so now uh, what i do is like i need to make a try right so what i uh, so what are the possible combinations that uh, i can use to uh, i can use to take elements off off so there are four strings right so i can pair them like 2 2 and 3 1 right so if if three of them had some common substrings i could pair those three and one separate branch like so three strings go here one goes here two goes here one goes here we can i can also break it like uh, so this this are for two options i can also break it like 1 plus 1 right 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 i can also break it like 1 plus 1 and 2 right if if these are my branches so this is uh, are all these possible combinations how i can break the tree right how can break it into uh, break the tree right so that sums into four right i am i have given four strings i am not given n string so why should i worry about generalizing right so now uh, for one one strings you know the longest common substring would be the uh, like it would be the maximum uh, if i just take one 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 it would be the maximum number of nodes so i just delete this option right right so all i am left with is this is uh, is this these three options so i can raise the hand wait uh i Akhil, do you want to say anything? You can type it in. Okay, sure. So, uh, so if I do with the uh, ideology of one, one, one string per branch, right? So that would be the most inefficient way how to solve uh, uh, for a leaf node, right? So I only have three choices here. So I can, what I can do is I can co uh, make combinations of two, two. Like I can select two strings of them and then select the longest common prefix in those two, and then try to make. uh the number of nodes equal to those i can do it 3 1 and i can do it 1 1 and 2 right so that's what this is what i told to the interviewer so generating the permutations would take 2 to the power n and n is 4 so 2 to the power 4 is a constant value so i was like i don't worry about the time complexity because you given me four strings so after this the interviewer was impressed okay so after getting the longest common substring you just try for all these cases right and try for all these cases and uh and then generate the so and rest of all you can add the maximum values so after i pr 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 proposed this algorithm so he asked me to code it code it on rust pad like there's no editing or something like that i was just given a function and i had to write i wrote the code in c++ and uh, he was like fine uh, it's okay and that the interview ended right so i just wanted to hear uh, what are your thoughts on the interview and what do you think was really required to clear the round one interview what were the things that you needed to know that uh, you needed to clear the first round
right so first of all simple logic first of all you needed to know the data structure itself if you didn't know try you'll be like uh, you wouldn't have able to solve the question right first of all try to go for simplicity exactly so uh, this interview was like thinking about like if you uh, if you try to make stuff more complex for you or not so uh, if if an answer is simpler if an answer is simple it's probably correct similar logic right so uh, this one and also if you can see uh, you need to so if i go on your projects right so your dev dev work was uh, mattered in this interview so if you didn't do good dev work so some points uh, might have been cut i do not know how the interview judges but you need some dev work and the second point you can see you needed to know about your this was due to i said that i knew cryptography so you needed to uh, know uh like some stuff about what you're being taught like if in uh if you are in uh if you are a big fan of maths and you said that uh i've been taught four year series right so he would have asked you questions about four year series and all this stuff and you, you need to be confident when you are saying and so that the interviewer knows that uh you actually know stuff that you're being taught about and then uh then obviously then comes the dsa problem and this is also a typical dsa problem because after the interview right i was searching for the correct answer and i found something like if i just search for permutable strings right uh and i try you can see this was also asked right and there's no answer here but okay so find the number of common characters but uh some of the remaining not exactly the correct answers but you can see like uh they repeat their questions in the first round at least right so uh so one thing that you can do right when going for an interview right so just research about the company and uh see if they if they are dumb enough to repeat their questions and unfortunately i didn't uh i didn't see it earlier but okay never mind i cleared it so uh but if you uh, if you saw this question earlier let's say by chance only so you would have a advantage over other people right so uh you you could go on and search for media net last round questions or any x company you are applying for and last round coding around interviews and something you can read about experiences so that's why i also am uh preparing this doc for you i'll share it up at the end of the session right but uh, so that's round 1 so moving on to the round 2 interview so in the round 2 interview i was uh interviewed by a person called mohan das and uh, he was uh, an associate uh, he was a senior project manager at medianet right so from sd2 to, to senior project manager right so it went uh, so the person interviewing me had a higher role so so this was the coding question that uh, was asked of me right so uh so let's have that interactive session again i guess so you have n juice boxes with the expiry dates at home so uh, let's say you have uh, an array of size n right so let's say one juice box is expiring at 1 one juice box is expiring at 2 days one is expiring at 1 one is expiring at 3 so on right so you have uh, let's say four boxes that are getting a, a with expiry dates juice boxes and uh, uh, you have a shop right and there are m boxes let's say the shop has eight boxes and uh, there are expiry dates there too right so uh, let's say something along these lines i'm just randomly putting integers i don't know right okay so uh, these are eight right so the uh, also with expiry date right so uh, what you needed to do is you need to calculate the maximum amount of juice boxes that can be consumed without having to throw any juice box away so let's say if you uh, also yeah i i forgot you can only i just misspelled it you can only consume consume k boxes per day so let's say if k is 2 right if k is 2 i can consume two boxes per day so i'll just try to consume one and one first right and so uh, i i can consume two boxes per day so i need to find out the maximum amount of juice boxes that i can consume without having to throw any juice box away so let's say if there was some box uh, so so let's say there was this another uh, if instead of four it was five right and let's say if there was another juice box expiring in one day right in the next day i can only 
consume two juice boxes and the third one would get expired and I have to throw away expired juices. So if I have to throw away expired juices, I have to return minus one as my answer. So my answer would be minus one in this case. And if this wasn't here, so if it was four, right? So I could have consumed uh, uh, these two in the first day, right? And uh, these two in the second day, right? And uh, these two in the third day. So, and this in the fourth day, right? So I can consume uh, all these four boxes and three more boxes from the supermarket. So answer would be seven, right? Did you, did you guys understand the question? Okay, so yeah, I didn't read the chat. Maybe you should make the interviewer ask about topics we know. Yeah, you should try to play some mind games. Like uh, if you tell, right, if, if interview can ask you what all the courses you have learned. If the first answer that comes out of your mouth is computer networks and you don't know anything about computer networks, that's a uh, that's not a optimal move on your part. So you try to make an interview ask questions that you are confident about. Yeah, uh, absolutely. If you sit idle, uh, you also like I'm talking with you guys, right? I'm talking with you. I'm just sharing my thoughts and you guys are also sharing your thoughts in the chat. So do not sit idle. Just share whatever it's coming in your mind. And interview just does give you hints. So uh, interview does give you hints. So is uh, they don't expect you to solve the question from bottom up from scratch, right? And like in an uh, just one hour interview with some, and it's really hard to code when someone is watching, right? So interviews are also humans. They are fine, right? But uh, you need to talk. You need to explain what's going in your head, right? And so that they know that you know. So let's go, move on to this question, right? So let's see uh, what is the approach that's coming in your mind. Is there a limit on possible input for expiry date? It doesn't really matter. Two hash functions, one for what we have, another hash frequency function for total oranges we have, plus market one, then iterate over the days and consume maths. So can you explain it for uh, like uh, what, which hash functions for one? Okay, so uh, count map your, can, when can we consume from the other box? This is not an other, uh, other box. You can consume only two boxes. Like this is the shop. So you can buy stuff from the shop and also consume it. You just need to have maximum amount of juice boxes that you can consume, right? Without throwing anyone away. Without throwing anyone away. So, uh, Joshi, can you elaborate? So two hash functions, one for what we have. So let's say if I have a frequency map for this, right? As Joshi is saying. So it's like one, one and two, one and then three, one, right? And frequency map for this too. So let's go on. Let's see what uh, Joshi is going with. So one, three, right? And two, two, and then three, one, and then four, one, right? Uh, three plus two, wait, I missed something. Three is two, right? So two plus two is four, four plus three is seven, one plus one, yeah, yeah, eight, yeah, it's fine. Now, after, uh, yeah, iterating over the days, we can consume the max, right? Uh, I mean, if you try to iterate over this, right? Uh, if you are iterating, you consume these two boxes, right? Okay. So you can consume this box too, but you cannot consume this box because it's already expired on day one. Within the limit. Do also we need to subtract the count of expired ones? No, if, if, if something expires in your home, it's minus one, okay? If something expires in your home, you have to throw it away. And if you have to throw the box away, the answer is minus one. So 
so what i came up with that uh, at the moment itself right i i just tell you uh make a single hash uh but if you make a single hash how will you di- uh, differentiate something expiring in the shop and something expiring at your home we need to only buy those things we can consume right if you buy something you cannot consume you have to throw it away and the answer would be minus 1 yeah same uh, same thing chalu adi uh, what you dm to me so uh, if you add both frequencies and iterate then you won't able to differentiate something that is at, at home and something that is at the shop right so let, let's uh, let's move forward and uh, i'll just tell you uh, what i tried to approach right i tried to approach like what joshi did right so but uh, also uh, so they were uh, i was thinking about the problem right so let me help you so uh, let's say if i'm bo- if i'm buying x boxes from the shop right first of all first of all uh, if my answer is minus 1 or not right uh, do i need the shop to even check that creating frequency hash map okay no right uh, if i buy if i buy zero boxes if i buy zero boxes from the shop right i can literally check that i can it literally iterate and check if i can consume all the boxes uh, without expiring or not right that is fine with everyone right so uh, i don't ca- even care about the shop i uh, for the minus 1 part i can just iterate over this array right so even iterating over this array you can make a frequency map or you can just sort sort it right so if you sort it right so let's say so always you need to consume the first that is expiring fast right at your home so uh, whichever uh, whichever juice expires fast you need to consume it first so first you consume these two boxes next day you consume these two boxes and whenever you see something that you cannot consume so that also means you cannot consume something that came before uh, came uh, that comes after it right like uh, let's say if if there was an additional one right so a day was one here and then at day 2 i i accounted this right so at day 2 i cannot uh, drink something that expired on day 1 so that's a straight up minus 1 so uh, i just need to check in my first array if i sort it and and then i iterate over it and then i can just check that if i can uh, I, i actually drink anything without throwing anything right so uh, this part is done right so this part is done so so if my answer is not minus 1 right so let's assume i i take x boxes from the shop right let's take i uh, assume i take x boxes from the shop okay so if i can take any x boxes from the shop which of the boxes shall i take which boxes from this i should take if if let's say i'm the maximum expiry date exactly because if i select those boxes with the minimum expiry or with some random expiry date they can get expired right if i want to select x boxes on the shop i'll i'll select those boxes with the maximum expiry date yes exactly shri ganesh you're right so to fetch the maximum expiry date i can also sort this too so that's 1 1 1 and then 2 2 and then 3 3 and then 4 right so i'll just uh, remove this as of now and so let's say if i uh, if i wanted to uh, let answer was 7 right if, uh, so i already can drink four here so i also have to remove this right i can also drink, let's say if i can drink three so i'll i'll preferably drink these three because i cannot drink these three right so i can drink th- these three so if i can uh, also so if i if i'm buying x boxes from the shop uh i'll just type it here because if i'm buying x boxes from the shop i'll buy the boxes with max expiry date is this part clear hello yeah yeah okay so so what we need to do is our answer answer must be like uh, so our total answer here is just 
n plus x, right? Our answer here is n plus x, and we need to maximize x, right? We need to maximize the number of boxes we can drink, right? So there's an there's an option, right? So you can try iterating from uh, from x equals to one to x less than or equal to m, right? And then check if you can drink all those uh, all those boxes, right? So this is one option, right? So this would take you. So, so let's say uh, we'll optimize it later. Okay. So just let's say that you can iterate over all those x's, right? So n plus x box. So let's say x equals to one, and you can drink. So I just have zero, two. So let's just say inside this loop, right? Uh, inside this loop, how will you check that if you have uh, gathered, like say, four boxes, you can drink along with these? How will you check? How will you check that if you take the four maximum boxes from the shop and you can drink along with the uh, original boxes that you have at home? I mean, it doesn't really matter, right? Uh, sort them and check. Yes, one example, one, one thing is to sort. So you can just uh, take X boxes from here, take this list and sort it with this list, and then like concatenate this list and sort them, and then you can check. But uh, the thing is, this is also sorted, right? You don't need to sort, you just need to merge. So uh, do you people know uh, how to merge two sorted lists? Right, uh, so you must have learned something called merge sort and this uh, function is used like if you need to merge two sorted lists. So one of the option is to either uh, just uh, let's assume that you have this and you can sort it with this and then you can merge and then check and then you can and, and then you can just uh, do what you did for the answer minus one or not, right? Right. So this is uh, this is what I actually did in the interview. So I had to implement this checking function, right? I had to implement this merging function and this same thing, but not exactly. So here is, uh, so you're just iterating it one by one, right? So the merging thing I can do. So, but uh, also you all guys also suggested some frequency maps, right? So you can also generate this frequency map and you can add this frequency to that frequency map too. And that would also work, right? So once you have a frequency map, you can just iterate over it, right? So uh, it's the same thing, right? You can uh, you can do any of this, but just uh, that frequency map would take n log n, and this merge would take just O of n, right? So interview would like to like for you to have this merge. This is still not the most optimal solution. Can you can anyone uh, tell me why? And uh, where can I improve? Sure. Wait, on your PC, are you asking me to record an OBS? And... No, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, okay, sure. Sure, sure. So, uh, so this is a monotonic function, right? And once you have, uh, and every time you have a monotonic function, you can implement a binary search. So, you can binary search on X. So you can have L equals to zero and R equals to M. And then while L is less than R or less than equal to R, right? You can have a function like uh, mid equals to L plus R by two. Do not mind my syntax. I'm just writing a pseudo code, right? And, and then you can iterate over this mid function, right? If, uh, and then you need to check, right? If if mid is my x, right? If if mid is my x, uh, so I need to check, right? If check is true, right? If check is uh, then check if if check is true, 
what do I need to do? And if check is false, what do I need to do? How do you do mind research? Jofi has taken a session for you, right? Check true if you can increase the lower bound, right? Yes, absolutely. If uh, if my check is true, right? So uh, I can uh, I can try for more. So I'll just make L equals to mid plus one, right? And if my check is false, then I need to decrease, right? So R equals to mid minus one, right? And uh, whenever I exit this loop, the L answer would be my X that I have to take, right? So X equals to L, right? And X equals to L, right? And my answer would be just uh, return N plus X, right? Uh, that is fine, right? Yeah, so, uh, okay, so this question is also solved. So as I said uh, earlier too, so I'll just keep my notes here if you want to just, if you want to delete all this, just make a copy and delete it yourself, right? So uh, I just wanted to ask you, like, what do you think about this interview? What all skills do you need it to have? It's the interview is not complete, but regarding this coding question. So what all tech, uh, what all was what all DSA was used here? Hashing and searching exactly, right? And you need to you needed to know a lot about searching. So uh, you needed to uh, so if you have done some binary search questions, right? Uh, your mind would go to the fact that you, you can binary search on the answer, right? I have to maximize x instead of finding where x is maximized. I can search for all x and see where it is getting maximized exactly because my function is monotonic, right? Uh, so that's uh, that's what binary search was uh, uh, binary search was used here. So let's move forward. So he moved on to uh, Manmohan Das, right? Uh, he moved on to SQL. So he asked me uh, some SQL queries. I answered those SQL queries. So also you can note that you need to know DBMS for coding interviews on product-based companies. And then he asked me how to optimize those SQL queries, like how are SQL queries optimized? So I actually didn't know this. So uh, I was like, uh, I have a zero to, I have little to none experience in SQL and uh, making projects. So I really don't know. So what he said that if you are making a database management system from yourself, right? If you are coding, right? So how would you make, uh, how would you optimize SQL queries? So uh, I said, I would hash those queries, right? If I am if I have a lot of queries that are searching for the last name of a person, let's say. So if I have a, uh, instead of checking linearly through every record, if I hash that name, then I could, I could do faster searches. So he was like, yeah, that's exactly how SQL does it too. So, after this interview, so I went on and learned about how SQL optimizes the queries. And thankfully I did that because this question was asked again in my round three. So, so I mean, this is a really important question then, how to optimize SQL queries. We'll discuss it when we go to round three, right? So after SQL, he went on to Unix. So he asked me questions about setup, grep, cat, and echo. So do you, go, do you guys know these commands? set of grep cat echo if you use linux do you guys use linux first of all okay so you should you should uh, like all the in in uh in almost uh in almost every company that you're gonna work right they are not gonna work on local machines they are work on uh they're gonna work on yeah echo is like print they're they're going to work on vms and cloud right and those servers, right? Servers are coded in Linux. So, and uh, you can't really install applications on that servers because you have to keep those servers lightweight. So, so you have to use these inbuilt commands that are in Linux. So 
I recommend out checking. So the exact questions they asked me, right? It was like, if you have a file in Linux, right? Uh, if you have a file on Linux and you need to search your name in, inside that file, right? What command would you use? So I was like, you can just straight up grep. So, and then he was like, if you have a, if you have a code and you need to find, uh, you need to print out the code in your terminal along with the line numbers. So what you'll use, I, I, I said cat minus N. So minus N flag is used to print out line numbers. So uh, similarly, uh, so here you needed to know about Linux because the actual work that you're going to do is on Linux servers only. Nobody uses Windows on their servers. Nobody is dumb enough to use Windows on their servers. So, uh, and then, uh, so the last question he asked me is like, how do I implement dynamic size arrays with constant amortized time? So uh, when I was the code college president, right? I took a session of how vectors work and how there's this constant amortized time there. So it's just basically that. So he just asked me a question about how do vectors or Python lists work? So uh, this is this was my round two interview. And uh, so I also cleared this one interview. I cleared all of them. That's why I'm taking the session absolutely. But OK, let's move on to the round three interview. And uh, do does anyone have any questions up to this point? Or shall I move on to the round three? I'll wait till the clock strikes seven. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, uh, round three interview. Uh, uh, yes, so if, when I remember the interview, right, I was like, after giving the interview, I was like shell shocked, to say the least, right? It was the most tough interview I ever gave in my life. I'm not kidding, right? So this guy, right, this guy was uh, arguably the vice president of MediaNet, right? And he was taking my interview. And this guy was uh, going in deeper and deeper into every question that I answer, right? So uh, let's have something interactive again, right? So first of all, he asked me about an intro. As like intro was asked in every round, right? You know, you you should prepare an intro that has some specific lines that you can speak every time, right? About you. So after the intro, he 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 was like wasting zero time at all and just straight up interrupted me and asked started me asking questions. Okay. So he asked like, what happens when you type facebook.com in your browser and leave your hands? Like what happens in the back end, right? Fortunately, this is a very, really common interview question. So you can uh, you can ask like, uh, you can just search what happens when you type google.com or something like that, right? So I'll just show what happens. Yeah, this, this right. So uh, see, glassdoor.com interview. So this is just like a really, really common interview question, right? So. Uh, yeah, just just read everything about this, and I, I just said everything, right? Because I, I I had learned it, right? So this was a really common interview question. So and also uh, I'll be the first one to admit I'm not that good in computer networks. So everything that was asked about computer networks in here was preparation only. Or if I didn't prepare, I would have uh, failed miserably. So. Uh, next, after Facebook.com, so uh, when I said that uh, uh, you get HTTP requests back from the Facebook server, right? So he went deeper, in fact. So it's like, uh, what is the format of the HTTP request? What do you get in that HTTP request? I was like, uh, you probably get an HTML from that HTTP request. He's like, that's it. How many more requests do I need to uh, uh, throw from my browser to Facebook.com servers? So I was like thinking for a, a minute or two and I said like, yeah, instead of HTML, there's also many more uh, resources like CSS, JS, everything, uh, the static content uh, on the website, right? So he's like, do you make multiple requests for that? I was like, uh, I guess so, because in one request you only get one thing. So he's like, how can you optimize this? So I'm like, uh, instead of sending multiple requests, you can just try to like have some common file, like some zip file or something like that, where 
uh, where the SFAP request is sent as a bundle. I wasn't sure. I'm still not sure how it's done. But I was like, I was like, if I, if I had to do a network, if I was one making that network, how I would do it, right? So if if I can just send one bundle, so there would be just less requests. So that's uh, then I said that, and then he just straight up moved. He he asked me what are the seven layers of networks and their functions. Thankfully, again, it's called OSI seven layers, and I had learned it just the day before. So you can see it's in my history, right? OSI seven layers. I've also did. I also did, I also I went on this link, and then I just uh, wrote memorized all this, right? So. This is also a really common interview question. So they ask you about the seven layers of networks and their functions. So, and then he moved uh, on from networks to OS and I breathed the sigh of relief, right? So I was like, okay, finally it's done. Networks is done, let's go. So uh, so now he starts about asking you uh, about OS and threads and processes. And I'm actually really confident on those, right? So he went on deeper and deeper. I've just uh, mentioned the question. So he, first he asked me what are processes and what are threads? What is the structure of a thread? When I answered, then follow-up question, what is the structure of a thread? Then follow-up question, it is, is it beneficial for me to write a multi-threaded code for a single code? And then uh, in this question, I answered it through hyper-threading. Then he asked me, what is hyper-threading? And then he asked me, if is it beneficial for me to write a multi-threaded code for a single code for a CPU intensive job? So same question as the uh, previous, previous question. And But if it's a CPU intensive job, and then um, I, I answered all the questions about OS flow, honestly, because I, I'm really into the threads processor and, and that stuff. So uh, if you have an OS OS course, right, and uh, processes OS threads or processes course, right, so uh, you need to know about uh, what you're thinking, what are cores, what are threads, right? How do I, how these things actually work? They're quite fascinating, to be honest. And it's it's not like uh, what are semaphores, what are mutexes, and uh, how do you implement parallel programs? How what is switching? What is concurrency and what is parallelism? Some difference about those those two stuffs, right? So uh, you need to know uh, about those. So and then afterwards he went on to DBMS. And fortunately, after this uh, SQL thing that was asked on the second, right? And I wasn't able to show. So just before the round three interview, I just learned all of DBMS in two days. So, <laughs> so he asked me about DBMS, what is no SQL? How do you optimize SQL queries? So I told it is repeated from interview two. So I'm gonna answer that question now. So how do you optimize SQL queries? You're optimized by a process called indexing. So what is indexing? In, indexing is uh, done by B plus trees. So I would like indexing is where uh, you can, you hash some values and have some smaller tables that have pointers to the original table. And uh, then that table can be recursive. So for that table, you can also have some multiple indexes. So there are multi-level indexes. So, and then he was like, how, what are, how is indexing implemented? I said B plus T. So he said, what are B plus T's? I explained what a B plus T is. Then he asked me this question. If I use a balanced binary tree instead of a B plus T, what will be the differences in the DBMS? How will I implement it differently? So I was like, okay, I, I will do this and all that stuff, right? So. You just imagine all these questions and this wrapped within 15 minutes, right? So he was like not wasting any time at all. Whenever he thought that I know the answer, he just interrupted me. He didn't let me go on and ask the next question. So it was like really hectic for me till now, right? So uh, this, all, this all was just 15 minutes and this is the problem solving question, right? And so this is just a... Uh, this is just a core CS value interview. So I have a link, right? Uh, I have a link. I'll share it with you after I stop sharing because to access that link, I have to go on my WhatsApp and I don't want to reveal my WhatsApp in publicly, right? So uh, I'll just share it with you, with you after I stop sharing the screen. So there I practice these questions, right? So uh, I'll just share the uh, I'll share the link with you guys. So, so this is a problem solving question, right? And this was this, this was just, just an amazing question. So this is not a CP question. So this is more like a system design question. So let's go, uh, let's have an interactive session here too. So uh, this is a question. Imagine you're working for Twitter, okay? And you need to design a data structure to implement a function called nearby tweets. 
So you need to implement something like if you open your Twitter app, there's an option called nearby tweets. And whenever you open that uh, function, uh, you fetch all the tweets that were within a two kilometer radius, right? So, and just imagine a real world solution, scenario that you have trillions of tweets and billions of users, right? So, uh, and you are given, so I, I didn't say, right? So you are given GPS coordinates, let's say. Uh, GPS coordinates of all tweets, right? Let's say you have the GPS coordinates of all tweets. So uh, how do you design a data structure so that whenever I open that feature, right? Fetch, to, uh, fetch tweets in a two kilometer radius. I get all the tweets in like 0.5 seconds. I have to design an efficient data structure so that this is implemented. So I'll give you guys time and let's let's talk and let's think together. Did, did you guys get this problem? Or do you want more information or something like that? You, you guys there? Nice. So as you already can see, this is not a typical CP question, right? This is a, a real world scenario. You have trillions of tweets. You can't basically take a matrix, right? And have everything in there. I'll wait till uh, seven eleven then. If no one there, I'll drop a hint. Let's let's keep it that way then. Right, so something like uh, fetch all the tweets with uh, GPS coordinates which are up to two kilometer far and then GPS coordinates to kilometer conversion. How do you do it? That's the question, right? How do you fetch? <laughs> you just repeated the question. <laughs> How do you do it? Yeah, so GPS coordinates to kilometer conversion can be done through Euclidean coordinates, right? Euclidean distance. At two points, right? Graph. So how? Tweets within a two kilometer radius circle. Yes. And how are you going to store? So you're going to check all the tweets that have ever been made. And for each tweet, you're going to calculate the distance. And if it's less than two kilometer, then you'll show. They are like trillions of tweets. How are you going to manage that? In an array with sorts and find the sorts on them, but they are multiple users. They are multiple users, Sri Ganesh. Like if I am searching here, right? If I am searching here, and for other user, I have to I have to have all the distances in sorted manner for every user. For me sitting here, it's it's different, right? And for some person sitting in US, it would be different, right? Yes, so. Is uh, Chalwadi says, is it possible to create a matrix with coordinates because coordinates are decimal? It's not right. Coordinates can be co co coordinates can be anything. It can be 
it it can be uh, integers it can be negative it can have decimals and stuff right so you cannot even create a matrix with that so so right you so it's like every, every time you check your nearby tweets this one is going closer yes uh, so everyone regions how how can you define regions there so okay rishya was really close close to the answer right nice nice our we can use cities and areas like blocks uh, yes yes but i need the implementation how how are you going to do that you have a 2d world plane let's say of all the possible of you you have a just uh, if you have a pen and paper right now right so try to draw a square right try to draw a square and have random points there in, like infinite points there right and every point can access your query right and then make a square around it something like that around those boxes how how can you do it right okay let's say i have a white board man so let, let me do it uh so uh let's say if i have uh like this is working right yeah so let's say this is my world this is the earth flat earth is so this is all the gps coordinates right and i have a lot of users a lot of users right and uh I've just made some random dots, right? And this is the user uh, which is trying to access, right? And this is a two-kilometer radius around him, right? Two-kilometer radius around him. So, do you get any hint from this image, or how how are you gonna manage that? Rishya was really co close. So, uh, long and long barrier would be there, sorted by date tweeted. But you cannot sort everything. Yeah, trillions of tweets. Can you? we divide the region in terms of square blocks yes how will you divide it let's say if i'm getting a query from uh, coordinates x and y right if i'm getting a query from this coordinate right so uh, i just need a function right which takes a coordinate x y and returns a list of a list of tweets within 2 km radius that's it and you can make a data structure to store all these tweets or something like that How many blocks will be there, Rishab? For every user, you will have a two-kilometer block. There are like seven billion people on planet Earth. Like, if even online, how many people are will there be on Twitter online? Will you, uh, will you have to maintain some data for every user on a server with all the tweets around him, and also and for every block only? So. Yeah, yeah, you are close. You are close, Rishab. You are close. Blocks is the answer. Every block in the range of two kilometer is incremented by one. So, what is a block, in fact? So, I'll just tell you what I did, right? Uh, I'll just two D array. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but okay. So, but how? How? So you'll you'll have all the tweets in a two two D array. It's, it doesn't find seem right, right? So let's say this is your world, right? So what are what i was thinking right if i uh, so how did i optimize uh, ds wait it's not getting okay it is up and then change it to 40 all right let's say uh, how, how did i optimize dbms queries through indexing right through hashing so let's say if i had a, a point here right and this is my 2 km radius right 2 km uh, radius right if i had a if i had a square circum size uh, like inscribing that circle right inscribing that uh, inscribing that circle right and if there was some way to hash this block right and uh, so let's say if i had if i divide it into blocks right if i divide this uh, whole area into maps right uh it was such blocks and then there was some way for me to figure out which blocks does x and y lie in right so uh 
if if my so in the nearby two kilometer right if this is four kilometer two and two i just need to search that block for the tweets right instead of searching every tweet that is alive yes rn so that is what we are doing right we are mapping coordinates to a block number exactly but uh, still what is the block size do you want what is the size of this size of an individual block what do you want it to be Four kilometer square or sixteen uh, kilometer, four by four, right? But what if, what if the user is on here, let's say, and then the circle would be like this, right? The radius would be like this, and you you need to check all the, all the possible as small as possible. Are you sure? And how many blocks do you have to check? You need to implement it. So for this, you have to check these three, these four bo boxes, right? These four boxes too, right? I, I'll I'll tell you the answer, right? I'll just clear this. So first of all, uh, let's say if I divide the world into, this is not the complete solution yet. Uh, I'll, I'll just divide the world into two by two squares. Okay. If I divide the world into two by two squares, uh, this, these are looking more like a rectangle, but okay. Just, just bear with me. Okay. And if I divide the world into two by two squares, right? So this is side two and this is side two. And, uh, so if I have a point here, right? So this would be my circle, right? Right, and I have to search uh, these four points, these four blocks. One is like really close. You use a larger block to store four smaller blocks. Yeah, you're 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 really close to the actual answer then. We use a tree implementation to zoom into small box. Exactly, once you you found it. Uh, I don't know some appreciation from my side then. Yeah, so I, I'll just tell, right? So if I have two by two size blocks, right? Uh, I was just going two by two size box and uh, I have this circle, right? And then uh, at, at the worst case, I have to uh, see these four blocks. And in this case, I have to search eight blocks, right? So for any block, uh, if any block, right? If it's on this, right? I need to search these eight blocks around it, right? Only these eight tweets. So this would be two, 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 two. So this is two. Uh, this is six by six, right? So for any two by two block, I need to search for all the tweets in the six by six block around it, right? And instead of searching in the whole world, right? In the whole world, instead of searching in the whole world, I just need to search in the six by six block around it and then fetch the tweets in the six by six block and then calculate the Euclidean distance. And if it's less than two kilometer, then put it, right? And if the user is in the middle block, yeah, eight blocks in the worst, right? Eight blocks around it include nine blocks total, right? So six plus six, it's fine, right? Nine, nine, nine total, including that block, yeah. In the worst case, right? If I have a two by two implementation, right? So, but how do I find this two by two, uh, two by two thing fast? How do I map everything into two by two? And that is how I, that is how I do with, uh, so someone raise a hand so you can unmute or type it in the chat. If it was a mistake, I'll just continue, yeah. So, once was absolutely pinpoint, right? So, instead of doing all this, right? So, let's say we first divide, we have x, y coordinates as a GPS, right? We first divide whole earth into four parts, right? This is first quadrant, this is uh, second quadrant and third and fourth just like a coordinate plane, right? I've divided, uh, I've divided into, so if my X is in, if my both coordinates are positive, then I have to, then I have to search in the first quadrant. And first quadrant is also then divided, subdivided into four. And similarly, this thing also divided into four. So you get how I'm making the blocks. So we are doing a recursive search. So X plus Y, so with the GPS, we can do some recursive tree-based implementation to find the exact two by two block 
the x x y coordinates lie in right right absolutely so is this fine so once we find that x y block the 2 by 2 block we can search the 8 by uh, search the 6 by 6 block around it and uh, uh, fetch all the tweets and then for all the tweets calculate the euclidean distance from x y coordinate and then you get the nearby distance right so searching mapping this would take just log of whatever the earth's square size is right and because it's a log it it is not it is not really much so and that's it's, it's also log base 4 so it it's still a it's a, it's still a constant so this is also really efficient and do you know what all your networks right cellular networks are implemented this way have you ever traveled from one state to another and you have notice a change of cell towers the cell towers connect in this way so each tower has a range it occupies and provides services for so whenever you move from one block to another right so from whenever you move from one block to another your carrier tower changes so something like this is also implemented in your cell phone networks right so okay so this was what i arrived with in the interview to right for the interview i wasn't happy yet so the next question he asked me like the follow up right so next question he asked me was let's say if i have uh, uh, i want to fetch the nearby k tweets right uh, so i have to fetch the nearest k tweets instead of uh, instead of the radius right i have to fetch the near, nearest k tweets what all changes do i have to make in this data structure now everybody understood this solution till now right right do you appreciate the solution right it's not your average cp question it's your system design you are designing a data structure right so uh, it's a real it's a real world scenario so and now if you want to fetch nearby k tweets how are you going to change it i'll wait till 727 hope i'm not taking too much of your time but i guess this is helpful right absolutely so you guys you're absolutely correct and how do we go from small, smaller box to larger box there are two ways right you can absolutely calculate right this is a recursive function right if this is xy and this is xy you can calculate the coordinates of this and this and you can search like first if you search here right and then you can search here and then you can search the enclosing one right till you get k to x right Till you get K tweets. Yes, absolutely. What's all seen now? Wow. Absolutely. Backtrack. You have this. You had these nodes, right? As your tree, right? You can just go into your parent and search all the other children. Just go into the parent node and search all the children. Absolutely. Perfect, man. So, uh, and now the question comes, right? How do I optimize this now, even further? Let's say. there's antarctica too right there are like really few people in antarctica so do i still need a 2 km 2 by 2 km box there too in the oceans too in antarctica too what do i do in that case yeah if if the nearest tweets are in an area less than smallest block you just need to go into the block and calculate the euclidean distance right and then sort you don't provide children to the blocks near the ocean how do you figure that out if that is an ocean or if that is not absolutely jason wow uh, we have lot of smart people here so that's what i also thought right i was also giving the interview 
I was like, I, I would give weight to block based on population density. So for every block, right, I could have a current count, the online count, the tweet count, right? Whenever a user moves from one block to other, right, I can decrease the count and increase the count for some other block, right? And if there are like really few people in that block, right, I can just remove that child and have the parent as a block. So my world wouldn't be divided like same, uh, same regular size, size blocks, right? They would be divided of cells of different sizes. So let's say if this is North America and there is uh, less people there, and then then there is this Atlantic and uh, Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, right? So my blocks could be somewhat like this. Some some different. They are not actually uh, uh, perfect squares. They they can vary. So it's not a perfect complete tree. Now our tree is incomplete because we are just saving space, right? We are giving weights to blocks. If the population density drops below a certain threshold, right? I can just delete that node and have a parent. I have my I have my parent working as a node, right? And I can keep track of the population dynamically because whenever my number of tweets drop, right? I, ha I can have a count whenever some user moves from this block to some other block based on this GPS coordinates, I can decrement the count from one block and increment the count. So if I had a structure for one block, right? So structure, uh, and then there would be a count variable, a coordinates variable and some children list, right? This is my structure. If I'm going to implement a tree out of it, right? Did you get the solution, right? So absolutely incredible from uh, JSON, one channel, all this stuff. We have like genius people, like, but yeah, so you need to. Uh, so, what do you think about this question, first of all? How was this question? Yes, exactly. Real world application. You don't have this. Isn't it very similar to KN algorithm? I'm not a machine learning expert, but still, okay, I, I could uh, see similarities. I just know because I've worked on uh, 5G networks, right? I'm I'm currently working IBM as an intern, so I was like, I, there, it was an unfair advantage for uh, me being asked this question, so I just solved it really fast. But uh, if you think about it, then uh, you needed to know, you needed to have a good knowledge of trees, right? Recursive trees. You needed to have good knowledge of how do you prepare. Yes, it was kind of easy. We have, we have experience with networking and CP. Yeah, exactly. But uh, even if you didn't have experience with networking and CP, uh, CP was important in all those rounds. Like you can see all the, even including the coding round, the four technical rounds that uh, were ha that I took, including that online coding round. Everything requires CP, right? It's just in front of you. So, and also you need to know, you need to learn, think deep about real world scenarios like CP and MS, DBMS. Like uh, so, uh, so this is this is just the whole gist of my interview. So I'll share this link with you guys. So uh, just open this with your triple uh, ITK ID, okay? So. I'll put it in chat. So, so this is the whole process that I had, right? And uh, this is the whole process that I had and uh, I discussed uh, questions with you. So these coding around questions, I guess you can also try to solve online. This, uh, I guess this question, right? This was from a code forces problem. And this one was already asked earlier, and but I didn't see it earlier, but still, uh, instead of uh, coding around, you just needed pure CP, right? If I'm going to recap, are you leaving India? No, as of now, no. But uh, CP was, uh, if I'm recapping, coding around was like really important for CP. Uh, like CP was essential, quintessential in the coding around. And in the round one interview was your, he asked me about projects, right? So uh, your dev work is kind of important here. So in just one round, right? But 
after just going through all the process, I've gone through the whole process with you, right? So you now have an idea of how uh, product-based companies can, uh, or what weight is do product-based companies uh, give to various types of uh, various technologies or various uh, various branches of computer science, right? So uh, I have just you can just copy it, uh, make a copy of this uh, document, and use it. Uh, and now I guess uh, Joshi, we can start the Q and A session, right? Yeah. yeah. So if any one of you have any questions, you can type in the chat box or you can also unmute that. So that's fine. Uh, I'll show you my resume. Yeah, you can see my resume here. So, uh, these are the products. Oh, sorry. Oh, I I'll share the PDF with you guys. Uh, let me see if it's in my Google Docs. Wait. If it's in my Google Docs, I'll just share the link with you. Let me see. Yeah, it's there. Is this my updated one, right? Yeah, okay. So I'll just, I'll just share. There you go. Access with your triple ITK ID only. Right, you can check out the documents later, any questions, so we can conclude the session. No, no, no. Uh, the coding around the round one interview was after one week. And uh, every inter there was this one interview per day. Uh, yeah. So, is it okay if we do CP in Java? Absolutely, the language doesn't matter. At any point of time, have you felt questions asking were based on your performance in previous rounds? Uh, no, I don't think so. I just told you the whole process, but. Uh, as of me, I was like very fortunate, right? Because I don't know if you can call me fortunate or uh, me hardworking, right? Because, uh, yeah, I also had to send you, uh, I just stopped sharing my screen. Okay. I'll send you the, the course. Yes. Uh, link it's a code chef link. So I hope my screen has stopped and I am not, uh, let me just search. Uh, I sent it to some person. Oh. Yeah. So uh, you, I'm putting the link in the chat. So you can bookmark this link. So this uh, is the, these can be the links for you to prepare your C and DMS OS interview questions, like one liners. But I highly recommend you to. Pay attention to your classes if you are going through your C and EVMS OS classes, right? Because these three are the only courses that test your CS values, right? The core CS that you, rest of them is like too deep.
and uh, at any point of time yeah uh, kishore so uh, i don't think so because uh, i do think the uh, interviewers were in contact with each other right and at the end of the uh, third interview the hr did say that i had a positive feedback from all the three interviewees right and so and those three interviews i do think they uh, for the first two rounds like in media net uh the first round is not a elimination round so everyone that qualifies for the first round also qualifies for the second round and if you qualify for the third round is decided based on the performance of round 1 and round 2 so so the four people that got selected in round 1 right from our college also gave round 2 from performances of round 1 and round 2 you got selected for round 3 i hope i cleared your doubt kishore and any advice for third year students uh, cyril so uh, maybe yeah so uh, cyril uh, uh, about any advice for third year students if i uh, look back right and see what i did wrong first of all uh, i was uh, not uh, i was given four forces rounds right so only because of cp i guess i got this job right if i didn't uh, have any experience with cp i would have failed in the coding round only right uh, but if i'm going to go back right uh, i want to clear my basics basic data structures first right have some know some typical questions because this was all cp based right but com- the other companies that the service based companies that take interviews right they have really typical questions like they have uh, matlab repeating questions the questions that you find on lead code not on code forces do you, do you get my point it's like first i needed to know my data structures first and then go head banging into code forces rounds right if i did that correctly right if i had my concepts if i have my foundation if i had my foundation strong then i would have performed better and i found it easy and then uh, for third year students right i'll recommend first of all uh, get an internship right because work experience is kind of important because if you're not uh, this is like uh, a one time chance you need some backups right and if you have some work experience you ha- do gain an advantage when you apply for some lesser companies right i'm not judging by company but you you get my point right so for th- for third years get an internship right and uh, whenever you enter in the fourth year right uh, fourth year try to try to uh, get time for interview prep uh, i uh, you have that site called interviewbit.com right practice on that practice on lead code right and uh, once you do that right if you have time if you still have time uh, try to do code forces rounds like how how much time does it take to build a cp profile it take, if it takes 6 months right and uh it should be fine for you to get uh, going get fast get coding fast with cp right in 6 months it's 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 entirely possible uh i don't think so kishore so like if you are going for a technical writer right content writer uh those aren't given any importance so uh but okay if you want to have some work experience that's fine something is better than nothing but i will prefer for you to go into something that is related to your domain right and to something that you can use that if you're going for an internship right if you're spending time doing work for that company might as well do some work that you can learn and use it in your future do you get my point yes absolutely right so uh i so i'll wait till 7:45 till questions then uh shall we wrap it up then joshi joshi yeah yeah it's fine it's fine okay so uh, if anyone of you have any questions like you can ask right now yeah sh- shoot them here i'll probably not reply to you on whatsapp because like infinite messages <laughs> Yeah, and also our technical mentors, right? Joshi and Prasanna have uh, have 
organize a sub club called Coders Club, right? Yep, yep. Just one announcement for that. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, you people, like, uh, every one of you, just, uh, like, go through that email and fill up the form, mm -hmm. like, if you're interested. Because this would be a helpful session for your peers as well as you itself. Uh, so, uh, we were thinking to conduct as, uh, like, uh, in 2019, Vector also came up and uh, told uh, ourselves. So, uh, we are conducting these sessions just to have, like, CP and DSA common between us people. So... Yeah. But uh, also, you do know that what, uh, uh, okay, so didn't these batch get mail? Okay, uh, no, no, not these batch, because uh, Victor so said that uh, only 28 and 19 leads. Uh, okay, for leads, right? Okay. Uh -huh. So, so they were like uh, the administration of the club, right? Yeah, for yeah. yeah. In the administration of the club, okay, okay. Yep, yep. So that's 20, uh, you aren't- You will get, to... yeah. Uh, I think so, you will get the form after the selection of the coders club. Yeah, yeah. So uh, as of the coders club, I don't know if I have, uh, if I'll have time to conduct sessions, right? But I'm, I'm kind of free in weekends now because I don't have placements to worry about now. So I, I think that on Discord, right? We have a Discord. So if, if you guys are up for it, right? Just ping me on Discord if you want to do some lead code sessions with me. I'm down for it. Right? On weekends. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. If you guys are fine, right? Just ping me, right? I, I'll just uh, I'll just stream on Discord and you guys can join in and discuss with me, right? Yep, that would be good. Like just an uh, unofficial thing, right? We don't have to make it official. I'll just stream on Discord, mm -hmm. okay? Just like I stream yeah, yeah. Minecraft. Okay. Uh, uh, Jason, to your question, right? Uh, what I did, right? Before my interviews, right? I brushed up on the topics. I don't, you don't really remember, right? I just remember the OS things because uh, Linux tech tips, LTT, right? I'm, uh, I do follow some, uh, I do follow uh, core architectures and all that stuff closely to me because I'm really interested. But if you want to prepare the core subjects, right? You should you should brush up on them uh, before the interviews if you have that problem, right? I hope I answered the question. Okay. So it's seven forty-five. I hope this session was useful to you guys and uh, and you know what all stuff is as in media.net at least. But uh, I'm guessing because of uh, seeing all the interviews of product-based companies, most of the Product-based companies ask like this only because whatever they're working on the tech, right? Uh, you have no idea right now, including me, that what tech I have to work on. And it's like uh, the only way for them to judge a candidate is by their aptitude and uh, problem-solving skills. Uh, so that should be it, uh, Joshi. We can wrap this, right? And the host, okay. Yeah. I'll stop, I'll okay. stop recording. Wait. Alt plus R, right? Okay. Okay.